You know, this past week, I received several messages from people who are just feeling all alone in this world. And they said, I'm not, I, I'm feeling I, I need your help. I, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't know how I can make it on my own. It's just me. I'm not sure I can do it alone. And this expression, this feeling of just being so separated from the rest of the world, even though there may be people around them, they're just feeling alone, feeling so removed and often slipping into some levels of self-pity. I just feel alone. I feel as if there's nobody out there for me or with me. And I'm not sure I can really make it on my own. I'm feeling a little bit powerless. It's just me. Well, I wanna let you know that we are not meant to be alone. We, in fact, we're not designed or created in that way to be alone. It, because what we must understand is that we are certainly not powerless as well. So we wanna just grasp this today that you are not alone. But you may say, wait a minute, it's just me, Pastor. Do you understand? It's just me. I'm feeling all alone. I'm feeling that there's no one else around. I'm feeling this disconnect in so many ways. It's just me, but oh, it's not just you. There are many others, but what we want to embrace today is this wonderful truth. It's not just you because you're not alone. The Spirit of God is with you and will never leave you nor forsake you. You are never alone. We need to understand this good news, and to do so, we have to first grasp this concept that we are one with God. This is something so difficult for so many to grasp because of traditions of Christianity where, that have been taught that God is somewhere far off and very removed from us, that God is distant, punishing, that God is some uh, entity that is far removed and looking down in judgment and condemnation upon our lives. But what we have to understand is that we are one with this infinite love, this infinite wisdom, and that oneness is this power of comfort that will never, ever leave us nor forsake us. One of the things about spiritual people is that spiritual people are self-knowing people. They are people who have this wonderful self-realization. Many people are caught up in religious traditions and are religious, caught up in doctrines and dogmas and teachings, but a spiritual person is that person who has really come to a place of awakening. I know who I am, I know what I am. And in this moment of great self-realization, they are able to proclaim, I am a divine expression. I am the revelation of God. I am part of this universal whole. I am God revealed. And in this wonderful understanding of this awakening and awareness of who they are, they discover they're not alone. They are surrounded by a power and presence of wisdom and infinite knowledge that is there with them, never leaving nor forsaking. We're part of this divine intelligence. What we have to understand is this whole universe is intelligent. When we're dealing with God, we're dealing with this infinite intelligence, this infinite wisdom. So we need to deal with God intelligently because God is this intelligence. And this intelligence is telling us that you were created and made in likeness and image. And this is your true essence and your true nature is that of the divine. So to be intelligent, to be awakened, to be enlightened, to be fully aware who you are is to realize that the divine presence of God is in you and flowing from you and around you and always for you. We are part of this divine, infinite wisdom, this intelligence. And what we have to think about is that when it comes to mind, no one has ever seen mind, but we know that we have mind because we can think, right? At least sometimes we can think. I don't know about you, but there's been times when I've questioned, am, am I even thinking here, you know? But we all know we can think. We have moments where we know, hey, I'm thinking clearly and I am awakening this. So I am aware that I have mind. I have a mind that can be conscious and fully aware. And there's no such thing though as your mind, my mind, his mind, her mind, God's mind. There's just mind. Mind is this infinite intelligence. And we're part of that infinite intelligence. This whole, you might draw this big gigantic circle and know that you're part inside that circle of this infinite mind. We might picture it that way. 
there is just this intelligence and in this intelligence we move and breathe and have our being the scripture tells us so we are part of this infinite wisdom this infinite knowledge and that infinite knowledge is the knowledge of love a love a love that permeates our life a love that is always around us in us and for us a love that always is an energy that can flow through our lives, a love that is ever caring and compassionate and desiring our highest and best. So what we wanna understand is that quite often our mortal mind is limited just to the physical senses. And when we think just from the mortal aspect, but let's move into the realm of thinking from the spiritual aspects as well. Thinking in the God mind, thinking in the divine intelligence, knowing that infinite possibilities then are for us. And there's always something for us because we're not limited then to just the five senses or to the physical world. This one mind that we are part of, this one mind that is in us, this one mind that we've been created from, this divine intelligence that is filled with truth. That's right. A truth that comforts us, a truth that's with us, a truth that is a power of consciousness and knowing, a truth that is there for us of wisdom and good choices and uh, helping us to understand how to live our life to the fullest. There's as much of God consciousness or truth available to us as we will allow. So what we want to say is, wait a minute, I've been feeling so alone. I've been feeling in self-pity. I've been feeling powerless. I've been feeling all these kinds of emotions in my life, but let me awaken now to the understanding that the intelligence of God, the wisdom of God, the power of God is there for me and it will flow through me for it is truth. Truth sets us free. Truth liberates our lives. Truth enables us to move to higher levels. This is the consciousness then of God, the divine wisdom that's theirs. That choice is ours because as much truth and as much as you want in your life is up to you. You get to choose it. You get to say, I choose today to dwell in right thinking or righteousness, which is right thinking. I choose today to make this kind of choice. Most recently we saw the news stories of the Georgia representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and her statement as she expressed her regrets was saying that I was allowed to believe things that were untrue. Wait a minute, who allowed you? <laughs> who allowed you is you. You allow yourself. So when we look at this, we say the choice is ours. It's our free will, the wisdom of God the righteousness of God, the right thinking is available to each and every one of us. But we have to take the responsibility for how much truth we allow to flow through our lives, how much awareness of the presence of God we want to allow to flow through our lives, how much of the love of God we want to be comforted with and we want to allow into our lives. All of this is the journey of us taking responsibility and saying, what will we allow? What do we open our life to? Because when we do, this infinite wisdom, this intelligence, this what we call the divine mind, this one uh, infinite knowing that we call God, we're part of it. And we are able to feel it and sense it and know it and experience it and live it out. Because here's the great truth. This oneness that we feel with God, it never ends. It never comes to an end. It's never cut off or we're never removed from it. We're always one with the divine because we are created in that image and likeness. That essence flows within us. It is our true nature. And we may try to abandon that true nature, but it's still there. It's what you are made of, what you are made from, what is within you, it's there. And you will never be separated from this wonderful love of God. It's kind of like dyeing your hair. You know, you think you could get rid of your roots. You think you can get rid of your color, your natural color, right? You try, you try, you try, and for a while, maybe you're a little bit successful, but what happens? Suddenly that natural color comes out. Those roots are showing, right? It's your true essence. 
Now, you all are laughing because you all know the experience of dyeing your hair. <laughs> well, you all, oh, and those who have hair, right? <laughs> what we're saying here is that we're acknowledging that it is our essence. It's who we really are. And this oneness will never be taken from us, never removed, and it never comes to an end. For God is with you, in you, and through you at all times. And all that is of God, well, it's within us. That presence of love is there, and all we have to do is to recognize it. When we're feeling all alone, when we're feeling powerless, when we want to delve in self-pity, all we have to do is pause and begin to recognize, recognize this power of presence with us, in us, all around us. Pause and to recognize, to acknowledge it. This is so essential in our day-to-day -day journey and it should be part of our daily spiritual practice. You'll never feel alone. You'll never feel powerless. You'll never feel like, I don't know if I can make it on my own. Because when you begin to acknowledge this divine presence, you are now filled with this wonderful love, this wisdom, this knowledge, this insight, this comfort. That, oh, so much rises up within our lives. But we must first pause and recognize and acknowledge this wonderful presence of God. For when we understand our oneness, we understand we are not alone. We're all one, but yet we may be some very unique expressions and part of that oneness. We're all one, you, you, me, every one of us. We're all one together. And when we understand that, yet we may see the unique expressions of each and every one of us. It's like there's one soil in the earth, yet there are many different seeds planted in that one soil. And from that one soil, there's all kinds of wonderful plants rising up, different manifestations of the, from the different seeds. And so it is, we understand, we are part of all of the big one, that which we call God. We are part of this wonderful universe and we are all connected in that. We're part of something greater than just ourselves. And that is comforting alone to think. We're part of something greater than just ourselves and you are essential in this overall sense of oneness. Each and every one in Pound, Wisconsin, close to Green Bay, there's a wonderful manufacturing company. It's called Gretz Manufacturing. That's right, my relatives started a manufacturing company years ago and they made all kinds of parts for barn cleaners. Yeah, the comments on that. Uh, <laughs> barn cleaners that helped us spread manure. Uh -huh, that's our family tradition. <laughs> well, they've also been crucial in creating a special chain link that was used in the very first uh, launch of NASA into space. It was a crucial little cog, a small little thing that they created, they made, but it was used in creating that uh, space launch and enabling it to happen. Just that one small part, so crucial, so essential. Without it, well, they may not have made it into space, but that small part was an essential part of the greater, of the whole. And this illustrates that you and I and each and every one of us are essential and we're part of the greater whole. Uh, we are all uh, not operating alone, but part of this whole universe. We find in the scripture, it talks about there is one body, but many parts. Our own physical body just illustrates this very truth. We think about the heart, the lungs, the liver, the gallbladder, uh, the eyes, the mouth, all these different parts, each one unique, but part of the whole. You are part of the whole and you are essential. So don't ever feel that you are alone because you're part of something greater than just you. And it is an essential part of all the resources of the universe that is available to you. The strength of God then is this essential part that is available to you at any time. The strength of community, the strength of the universe. We can tap into all of this. I love this passage from Psalm chapter 46, verse one. God is our refuge and strength, and a very present help in trouble. God, this universe, is our strength 
and our help. We never need to feel like I can't go it alone. We never need to express, I don't know if I can make it. We never need to say, I'm so alone, I feel helpless and separated and removed because this power and presence, this infinite wisdom, this that which we call God, is our strength and is our refuge and a very present, keyword present, right here and now, help. Not a help that's distant, but present in this moment, right now in whatever challenge you may be facing, whatever difficulty that's coming your way. We also have to understand that we are one with God, but also one with one another in a dynamic way. Sometimes people forget this, that we're all one within the whole. We're all part of this together. You know, there's that illustration of people in a boat, someone in the bow, in the front of the boat, they are drilling a hole thinking, it doesn't matter, it's not gonna affect anyone else, but realizing that as he drills a hole, he affects the whole boat and everyone sinks together and drowns. Now, when we understand this, we realize that we are all part of this community, of this world, of this universe, and we're all connected. And what happens to one affects the others because this vibration of impact will go all the way around the world and throughout the universe. The impact of how we touch one another's lives, it resonates in a vibration that impacts so many, impacts each and every one of us. So it's really important that we begin to understand you're not alone, you're part of something greater, you're part of this wonderful world, you're part of one another, you're part of your neighbor, and that's why scripture says, love your neighbor as yourself. This is the guide for our life. If we understand that how we love ourselves is so crucial and important, but we need to love our neighbor in the same energy, in the same way that we are loving ourselves. Just as one body, though it has many parts, but all has many parts that form a body, is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 12, it's calling us then to love one another love one another in such a sense of awareness we're part of each other you are only alone and powerless in your thoughts of limitation that's right that's the only time you're really alone is when you begin to embrace these thoughts of i'm limited i'm separated i'm removed i'm all alone i'm powerless those are very limiting thoughts and so what we have to understand is that those thoughts can easily be removed. And what we welcome then is the comfort of the divine presence of God. It says, you're not alone. I'm with you. I will be there carrying you through as the psalmist writes in Psalm 23, leading you to green pastures and still waters. Though you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because the rod and the staff will guide you. The psalmist writes and paints that beautiful picture, we are never alone, for the power and presence of God is there. What happens is we have forgotten to awaken and aware, be aware and to embrace this wonderful presence. But you say, wait a minute, but in the physical aspect, Pastor, don't you understand? I'm still all alone. It's just me in my house. It's just me all alone in this world. It's just me and I'm feeling this loneliness. But let me tell you this, when you awaken to the truth that we are never alone, that God is with you even in the house where you say, it's just you, you are never alone. When you may say, it's just me and I'm facing all these challenges. When you awaken to the fact that you are never alone and you are not void of power and ability and wisdom and insight that's available for you to tap into, what happens is you begin to see the world differently. Your eyes will open to see love around you. You're going to be able to see love in a different way because you're now awakened to this God presence. You're going to see love and you're going to see connection with people. You're going to see uh, the whole world will take on a different view. You'll see other revelations of this divine and these physical aspects well, that you so desire of companionship or friend in a physical way, they're going to be drawn to you. It'll happen. You'll change. 
because you are beginning to live from the perspective, I'm not alone, I'm not powerless, I remove all self-pity, I'm not worried about to, that I can't make it on my own because I'm living and dwelling in the infinite knowledge and the wisdom that God is with me and I am not alone. So you live differently. You become actually more attractive. And in that mindset, you attract to you those uh, around you who are there to help and meet that need within you of that physical connection that you may want. Now, let me tell you this. Self-pity is one of the worst things that we can do because it's the last vestige. It's going to destroy any kind of vestiges of happiness within our life. So when we want to engage in this self-pity, I'm all alone and I'm feeling this loneliness and it's just me. Well, it's foolishness for us because we then simply have forgotten who we are, what we are, and that divine presence is with us, never leaving us nor forsake us. And we begin to create these moments of self-pity which keep us from coming into the full expression of our calling, of our true nature. So let's just eradicate that self-pity within our life, release it and let go because we do this, we can do this through a wonderful cure, which is to pour out love. Just pour out love. Begin to pour out love wherever you may be all alone in your room. Begin to pour love out in thought and consciousness. Pour out love for your neighbor. Pour out love for God. Pour out love for the world around you. Pour out love for your community. And as those thoughts of love begin to pour out from you, what happens is you begin to experience that there is no reason to feel sorry for myself because I have so much to give. And as I give, I know I receive. I have so much to share. And as I share, I know it comes back to me multiplied. I know it will return to me. So we remove these feelings of being alone. But you are not alone. The power, the presence, the love of God is with you. I leave you this wonderful passage from Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Be strong, be courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You are never alone. Amen.